I've done most of the things I can do. The whole purpose of recycling is to sell the material. And there are plastic buyers, there are metal buyers, and subgroups of those. There are number one plastic buyers, number two plastic buyers, aluminum buyers, tin buyers, glass buyers. Then you get into the fiber, the paper, uh, and that's broken into various grades, such as cardboard, mixed paper, office paper, white office paper, mixed colored paper, the list goes on. And the purpose of the processing facility is to prepare the collected recyclables for sale. The process is very simple. Uh, people recycle. We go out with a collection vehicle. We pick up the material, put it in the truck, and after the driver has completed the route, they bring the material back to a processing facility. And at the processing facility, it's weighed, unloaded, and then uh, the sorting begins. It's a very simple process. It's just very operationally intense to go around uh, collecting it, bringing it, uh, and then processing it uh, requires a lot of labor and a lot of time. Both the Campus Recycling and Refuse Department and Custodial Services lost employees due to budget cuts last fall. The cuts for the Recycling Department were voluntary, but the loss of manpower has the program's manager, Lisa Bauer, worried. Without proper funding, reaching the university's goal of producing zero waste by 2020 will be difficult, if not impossible. Despite the gloomy prognosis for the future, at least some students are doing their part to reduce their impact on the environment by recycling. Custodians are tasked with the responsibility of picking up mixed paper that is recycled within campus buildings. We collect, we collect mixed paper and then we collect them in separate containers. We have one container for trash and another container for mixed paper and we put the mixed paper into that and then um, when we take the trash out and the mixed paper out there's dumpsters outside that are labeled mixed, or mixed paper and, and trash and we put all the mixed paper into there and we take cardboard and all the variety of things so that's that's how it works basically and we're not looking to collect cans and bottles now there's separate containers in some buildings they have if, there, if the volume is enough, and this is something I heard, is if there's enough volume and there's enough demand for it, um, the recycling and refuse folks will supply a container for bottles and cans. And that's where the East Bay Conservation Corp people come okay. in. And they, they, they supposedly come in and pick up the, the containers of bottles and cans. The company that picks up most of UC Berkeley's recycling employs one of their own truck drivers to collect cans, bottles, and sometimes paper. Berkeley, well, it takes, I'd say, from... 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. to actually finish for a regular day and uh, all in all UC Berkeley is a pretty well recycling you know, unit actually everybody recycles pretty good in UC Berkeley please recycle the things that are recyclable and not the things that are not recyclable <laughs> you know because usually um, people tend to forget the things that are not recyclable and which makes it harder for the, the companies to deal with the situation that they require us to deal with. On our collection program, over 95% of what we pick up is called single stream. That is when all the recyclables are mixed together. Plastic containers, glass, metal, and paper are mixed into one uh, recycling cart and loaded into the vehicle. The containers drop through and the paper go up and then be sorted on the belt back there. This is our container line where we sort it by material type, which is the number two plastic, the number one plastic, the aluminum cans, and the tin cans, and the glass. The conveyor picks it up, drops it into a humongous compactor, and is baled and wired and then we uh, store it until we have a truckload and then we ship it to market to our buyer. But UC Berkeley students and faculty often fail to recycle their waste properly. 
The people are not supposed to put anything into the recycled containers, the desk side bins, besides mixed paper. And in fact, if there's something in there that contaminates it, like if there's a coffee cup that spills onto the paper, mm -hmm. it's contaminated and we're not supposed to, you know, my understanding is we're not supposed to put it in with the other mixed paper because it's not supposed to be contaminated. Mm -hmm. So cans and bottles technically contaminate the, um, the mixed paper waste. No, I mean, it's interesting because I think there's an education process that needs to happen. I mean, an ongoing sort of thing with the, with the people in the buildings and their offices and stuff like that because some of them don't know. They see the blue container and it says, we recycle, and they say, oh, great, they recycle. They throw everything that's recyclable into the container because they don't understand that we're oh, it's only mixed paper. Now, I have some signs that say mixed paper only, and I put them on some containers where we have some problems. But... Um, you know, bless their hearts. They're trying to do the right thing. You know, they're trying to recycle stuff, but they're they're mixing stuff up that doesn't doesn't mix with what we do. Luckily, the campus has a high population of what staff call local entrepreneurs, who have become a working part of the recycling program. Often homeless, these individuals keep the campus clean by collecting an assortment of cans and bottles. But everybody do it. It had become a more prevalent variety of people doing it now than ever before. And sometimes I see people even sneaking doing it because their pride gets in their way. You know what I'm saying? But you need a hustle. You need some kind of income in order to survive in society. Some people may look down on what you're doing, but it's doing something which is better than that. You can go around here putting in applications all day long, but you don't have money to even get the transportation where you're going to. You can't do both things when you don't have anything. When you guys sit down and eat lunch, that's one thing. The Oriental lady gets that. But many of you don't have time to eat lunch and you take your recycle to class. If you haven't finished your drink, bring it back out. That's where I get my recycles. That's what I call the exit window. Yep. Okay. 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock exit wave. People throw things on the ground, you pick it up. And you can get people that did I mean, they got people that employed to do that stuff too. And you really taking their job too. They don't have to do less work. Because you're ready to pick that can, you're ready to pick that bottle, you're ready to pick that up and stuff, you know what I'm saying? But you doing a job for the city and they don't even know that you're doing the job for them because they don't seem like you're doing nothing. For the Daily Californian, this is Molly Bluedoff and Delicato.